Chinese researcher who claims to have helped make the world's first genetically edited baby says a second pregnancy may be underway. He Jung Kui revealed the second pregnancy today during a conference in Hong Kong. Earlier, he claimed to have altered the DNA of twin girls born this month in hopes of making them resistant to the AIDS virus. A Nobel laureate from Caltech, among many others, called the experiment irresponsible. But the scientist defends his work. He says babies need protection because a vaccine for AIDS is not available. Joining us now is Carter Sneed, a professor of law and the director of the Center of Ethics and Culture at the University of Notre Dame. He's a member of the Pontifical Academy for Life, which advises the Pope. Welcome back to our broadcast. Good to be back with you. You've described this as a perilous new moment in human history. Why? Well, Lauren, this is the first time uh, that a scientist has directly intervened to change a human being's genetic constitution in a way that not only affects the life of that person, but also affects the life of every single person in that, per in, in that individual's future line of generations. Every child, every grandchild, every great-grandchild of these children will have the same genetic modification uh, that, was, uh, that was provided by this unique intervention, uh, sure. CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing intervention. L I want to get to the morality of this, uh, because that's not is what's being talked about in the media. The headline of an op-ed in this morning's print edition of the New York Times said, should we edit babies? Not yet. The digital version of the same piece amended it. They took out the not yet, and they said, well, we need to learn a lot more first. Its author, a professor, Eric Topol, condemns it it condemns gene editing and he does leave the door open to it in the future. Here's what he wrote. This is not to say that medicine won't someday employ gene editing technologies in similar ways, but that time has not arrived. There are too many risks. So this is something I've been hearing from other scientists on the media who say, hey, what was wrong about it was just the lack of informed consent of the parents or that we just don't have enough results to show that the editing will work. Right. Well, there's a whole lot more at issue than just safety. Of course, that's hugely important to use a speculative, untested intervention uh, in the embryonic stage of, a, of, of these twins' development to make permanent changes to their genetic constitutions. Obviously, safety is a big concern, but it's not the only concern. It's not even the, the, the main concern. There are concerns that are raised by this. Uh, there's a, a tightly uh, knitted cluster of ethical issues here. First of all, some are familiar. First of all, this depends on the use and destruction of human embryos. That's something we've talked about a lot in the past. It involves assisted reproductive technologies, which is something that we've talked a lot about in the past. But what's new here is, is the idea that we're going in and we're changing uh, the entire genetic future of these individuals and every individual that, that, uh, that stands in their line of succession in terms of biological generation going forward. This and not only that, this particular intervention was arguably uh, an enhancement rather than merely therapeutic. These were healthy little girls. These were healthy little female embryos. Uh, they're healthy little newborn babies. We hope they'll continue to be healthy uh, and that these genetic interventions don't have off-target mutations that affect their, their well-being. But the question of how do you think about uh, the obligations to, to unborn children, but also the children who don't even exist and the people that don't even exist in the future is an unbelievably complex question. And yeah. then when you add the issue of enhancement to that, what sorts of interventions are we going to allow? What sort of, inter uh, are they going to be therapeutic? These are only, I mean, th these are precautionary interventions that were yeah. performed on these children. Me, they weren't, these children were perfectly healthy. They didn't need any sort of right. medical Let me uh, get treatment. to the Vatican and, and what the Vatican and, and the church has to say about this. It released a document on bioethics in 2008. That was Dignitas Personae. There have been encyclicals, Veritatis Splendor and Evangelium Vitae from St. John Paul II addressing these issues. As a Catholic, is it ever okay to edit genes? Can you just break down church teaching for us? Well, I mean, as I said a moment ago, it's an extraordinarily complex series of steps in gene editing. If, you, if the question is simply, in principle, can you ever intervene to change a person's genetic constitution, uh, for, per, for therapeutic reasons, there, you know, we, we could think about that within the paradigms of usual medical treatment. There are things called somatic gene therapies where you go in and you take someone who's got a genetically based disease and if it's possible to go in and change their, their DNA in a way that could help them, to help that one individual patient, we'd think about that as probably the way we would think about any other kind of medical intervention directly 
uh, oriented to and the benefit of an individual. And that's because they're already born. They're but already alive. Talking, I think is is part of the distinction. <clears throat> right. Exactly right. Now, what was done in this case involved the uh, the uh, the production of human beings through in vitro fertilization, which the church has spoken very clearly against. Uh, it involved, it depends on embryo destructive research, which the church has spoken clearly against. Uh, and so it's hard to imagine how one could affect germline, that is heritable genetic modifications, in a way that would comport with our understanding of the way of who we are and what constitutes our flourishing. And but our if you could do a directed person. intervention into an individual. Right. Exactly right, exactly right. And so the idea, uh, if it were possible to do a genetic intervention in an in a, in a, in a existing person that would have heritable effects, effectively germline genetic modification, we'd have to talk about safety, we'd have to talk about how we think about future generations, our obligations okay. to them. But there's nothing, there's nothing, that, there's nothing in, that, in that scenario that would implicate the kinds of deep problems that were implicated by this particular right. individual's All research. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Carter Sneed, professor of law, and the director of the Center for Ethics and Culture at the University of Notre Dame. Thanks so much for coming on the broadcast. Thanks, Lauren.